Today on Code Dependent, we'll be bouncing a ball. So in a previous episode, we saw how to move a ball around and how to apply different easing functions to get different motion on the screen. But if we're taking that application, we're actually moving a ball from the top of the screen down to the bottom of the screen, it's natural to want the ball to actually bounce. Right, so how can we use what we learned about easing functions and effects in Flex 3 to actually bounce the thing off the bottom of the screen and have it come back up? So let's run this application that I call Bouncing Ball. And when we click on the ball, we've got this default easing behavior where it moves from the top down to the bottom. And the default ease in Flex is a, a sine curve, and it'll ease in and it'll ease out, which is nice smooth motion and appropriate for a lot of situations. But here, it's not much of a bouncing motion. So what if we actually want to apply gravity instead, and we want to accelerate all the way down, right? So every time I click on this thing, now it's just going faster and faster until it reaches the bottom of the screen. So here we're using a cubic easing function. Uh, which gives kind of the behavior I'm looking for, except it's not much of a bounce at the bottom. Instead, it's just kind of a sit there and do nothing. Um, so let's actually apply a bounce as well. So we'll bounce the thing off the bottom. So now we have an effect running that speeds it up all the way down to the bottom. And then when it hits the bottom, we detect that. And then we run an effect that bounces it back up to the top. And notice that as it does bounce back up to the top, it's decelerating all the way back up to the top. But apparently, I got to check the checkbox to actually get that behavior. So there it is, bouncing back up to the top and decelerating all the way. Um, but maybe we will actually want to see this thing go over and over again, because it's such an exciting application. So we click the repeat flag, and on we go. So let's take a look at the code that makes this thing work. So as before in some of these other episodes, we're simply setting up this ball panel that holds the ball, that exposes the properties that we need to change to actually move the sphere on the screen. Um, and then when someone clicks on the ball, we play the effect. And here, the effect is, um, there's actually two effects defined. Um, so if you click on the ball, it'll simply play the, the mover effect, which is the simpler one, um, similar to what we saw in earlier episodes, where it basically just moves it from the top down to the bottom, um, instead of actually bouncing it off the bottom. Uh, so it'll play this effect, goes from the top down to the bottom, uh, lasts for 1,000 milliseconds, it acts on the target of the ball panel, um, and it changes the ball Y property, all stuff that we've seen before. Uh, but based on uh, what is selected in the checkboxes down below, we can change the easing function to actually apply gravity there and have that cubic ease instead. So in particular, if someone selected the gravity, then we call this change handler up above in script code here. We say, OK, someone has changed one of the checkboxes. Let's stop both animations. I don't know if either or both are running, but uh, let's go ahead and stop them so that we can switch some properties around and then restart um, as appropriate. So we can change the easing function. If they've selected gravity, then we're going to uh, set the easing function to be this cubic ease in, which says run the cubic ease and ease in all the way, accelerate all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Um, and similarly, if we want to set uh, properties in the bouncing animation. Um, so let's go take a look at this. So we've got this other animation that's a little more complicated because we want to go down and then back up. Well, in Flex 3, that's done through creating a sequence where you have two animations, one of which is the reverse of the other. So we've got this sequence effect, ID of bouncer. We're going to act on the ball panel just as before, and we're going to last for 1,000 milliseconds. And uh, we've got two animations in there, um, which are both very similar to the one that we saw before. So we have an animate property, uh, which is basically a copy of what we're doing before, because we're animating down to the bottom of the screen. But then we have the inverse of it, where we're basically going from the bottom of the screen to a value of 0. So the way sequence effects work are that you and uh, you uh, run the first effect, and when that is done, then you run the next effect until you hit the end of the sequence, and then you go around. Um, and if it's repeating, you run it again. So we go back up to our script code, and we say, OK, we're going to set the easing function on the mover, the simple one that just moves it down to the bottom of the screen. We're also going to set the easing function on both the bounce down and the bounce up. And note that on the bounce down, we're setting it to cubic ease in, because we want to accelerate all the way. On the bounce up, we're going to set it to cubic ease out because we're going to start at full speed, which is going to be the same speed that we hit the bottom of the screen at. And we're going to decelerate all the way back up to the top until we hit 0. And then if they've selected repeat count, we're going to set the repeat count on both animations um, to 0, which means repeat infinitely. Um, so for the mover, that actually means it's going to start at uh, the top of the screen and move down, and then just pop back to the top of the screen 
um, and repeat that action again and again. So we could do this, and then it's just going to fall like drops, which is not quite what we were looking for. Uh, but on the bouncer, it would hit the bottom of the screen and then bounce back up. Uh, and then based on whether bouncing is selected, we either play the bouncer effect or we play the mover effect. So we're either just going down or we're actually going down and then coming back up. Uh, that is the simple application that shows you how to get a bouncing effect on a simple graphical object. We're going to have some follow-on episodes where we go into uh, more behavior to get more lifelike um, visualization of this object. Uh, when you bounce, maybe you can get some more realistic motion in there besides just the gravity effect of moving up and down. Uh, but that is all for today. If you want to check out the code for this application or other related stuff, go to my blog at graphics-geek.blogspot.com.